Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. The iRacing Porsche Cup is one of the most competitive series on the service. With no ABS, no TC, low downforce and an overall challenging driving style. However, some real life drivers have claimed that the 992 Cup car isn't actually that realistic. So, to back up these claims, professional GT3 and GT4 driver Daniel Morad decided he'd make a mod. The intention with this mod is to make it feel more like the real life 992 Cup car. And Daniel put this setup together based on his driving experience in the real 992 when he was coaching. So today, I thought I'd compare the two around the very difficult to master Bartha circuit. We've got Skippy bouncing oh. on the road. And I'll gather my own thoughts and opinions on the two cars and which feels better to me as just a sim racer. Let's get into it. So here we are at Bathurst. Obviously, it makes sense for me to test the normal 992 Cup first so that my opinions don't get thrown off by the new car. So we'll put our gloves on and we will get ready to do some laps around this circuit. Okay, so as we get ready for our first push lap, I'd just like to uh, shout out Daniel Morad, first of all, for giving me this video idea by uh, making this exciting mod. And second, for inspiring the camera angle we've got going on today. I definitely won't do this camera angle lots because it requires putting my phone on a tripod and all this hassle, but it is pretty cool and I hope, it, I hope it's appreciated. Oh! Okay, so now we're going to go for a bit of a push lap. It won't be anywhere near the sort of times you see other people doing. But I don't think that's the purpose of this video. So a few main things about the iRacing 992. First of all, as I mentioned, obviously you've got no traction control and no ABS. So it means on corner exit, you've got to be careful putting the power down because you kick the rear end out, spin those wheels up. And when you're braking, you need to be really careful because it's super easy to lock this car's rear tires. Or even the front as well. And then when you do that, you just straight line into a wall. Oh my god. Now the thing with Daniel Morad's setup that he's done is it actually uses ABS. Because from what I understand, Porsche Cup car in American series does have ABS as an optional choice. You can race without it, but it is optional and I'd assume most people probably do use it. Whereas in the European series, like uh, Benelux and Super Cup and all that, it's not used. I don't even know if it's an option. And this Porsche Cup fits that rather than the American series. So I think I'll use... I think I'll use the modded one without ABS. Just as, to me, that makes the most sense. And I'd like to see how different the braking feels compared to in this and how easy it is to lock up. Because I feel like the moment that you're able to rely on ABS to stop you from locking up, half the skill required for the cup car is kind of gone. Because braking is most definitely the biggest challenge for this car. It's You have to brake to slow down, obviously, and then to get it rotated in the slightest, you need to be good on the brakes. It just does not rotate. The front is so, so heavy. You basically have to force this car to do what you want it to do. And with the right inputs, you can make it drive really nicely. And the reason I chose Bathurst for this test is... I feel like it's just the perfect all-rounder circuit for a challenging car like this. You have the whole hill section, which, as you probably know, is just absolutely insane. And you have to be so perfect through there to, one, stay alive, and two, be even slightly on pace. And because you can lock up quite easily with this car, 
it's like the ultimate test of your ability in some ways because if you have a, a slight lock up up at the top of the hill there's a very high chance you're going to hit a wall okay so here we come into the final turn onto the quite short start finish straight nice sunset going on all right i'm going to keep it in fourth break at the 100 meters down to second fuck it in get on power definitely could have been so much quicker through there i think i'd break later then we have this stupidly long very hilly straight which leads into this quite tight cambered right hander here we break at the 100 meter down to third get it tipped in use all the track don't hit any walls come to the right here point it to the inside break go out wide and then rotate it bring it back in on power again avoiding every single wall careful on the throttle here because the bumps make you want to lose it around the right hand a bit careful using all the track a bit wide here lift off turn in wide as you can lift off here get it super tight get on power as early as possible then to the left here brake we're going downhill so it's very hard to get the braking right here and second tight on the right hander turn in as early as you can for the left on power down here then another steep braking zone down to second wrap it around the hairpin just about slightly give the wall a little kiss on power up towards this sign you can see how hilly it is it's ridiculous and we're going to have a slight kink to the right here flat out extend the track a little bit and at the 150 ball brake down to second get it rotated in on the brakes use all the track on throttle no lifting to the 100 meter board brake tip it in on the brake just start get it round on power across the line and it wasn't a very quick lap but it, it gives you an understanding of how this circuit is driven and also how stupid it is but I mean that in a good way <laughs> Ooh. okay <laughs> Well, there's one of my points quite confidently supported there, which is no traction control. And as you saw, rear end, I, I tried holding the power. The rear end went ever so slightly light. And then before you know it, you spin, you're in a wall, you've got damage and you break your wrists on your steering wheel. <laughs> not wanting to exhaust myself too much. I'm not going to drive any more in this car because I got a reasonable time of a 209. I think definitely it could be so much quicker but again i'm not really comparing lap times too much here because they are two different cars and even with the setup on the gt3 i kind of suspect that it probably will be quicker anyways so now we're here in our lovely pure racing manfly gt3r now already just from looking at the car you can see it's wider it's got way more aero it's got that huge intake at the uh, at the front of that grill and the spoiler is absolutely ginormous obviously this is a gt3 car so these are things to be expected it is you know it's a gt3 car but now this is my first time doing this what we do is we go to garage we go to our setups and we use the porsche cup morad mod so with this mod applied it should feel a bit more like the real 992 now already i'm getting some errors here this is possibly because of the track, but it's saying that my ride height at the front is too high. I suspect this was probably done to emulate the cup car, but I will have to lower it a little bit because the car literally will not be allowed to drive. It looks like 79.9 millimeters is the highest we can go on this car. 
without it having problems. Now, I won't go through everything because I don't actually know what's been changed. Um, but from what I understand, this should be way less downforce than usual. And then one more thing is we have to add 250 kg to the weight penalty. And this is what does a lot of the work because the cup cart is very, very heavy. That's part of the reason why it's not very pointed and it requires such precise braking input because with all that weight, you really, really have to know how to use the brake to shift the weight to the front, get grip on the front tires and really turn in. And if you can't do that, that's why it's just so understeering because it's such a heavy car and the weight transfer doesn't just simply happen based off of letting off the throttle. You really have to trail brake and get it to turn in. So we've got the setup. We've got 250 kg in weight penalty. I don't believe we need any power adjustment. And now we will get in the car and we'll see how this goes. I'm not really sure what to expect here. Interesting. Down to second. I'm going to drive this as similarly to the cup as I can. I don't have an awful amount of experience in this car at bar first. I think I have more in the cup car. So. I'll lift off. Get it hooked round. It definitely feels more planted as a GT3 naturally does. Um, and I'm not sure how much of a problem this weight penalty is. Oh, wow. So right there, coming into what I believe is the dipper. I definitely struggled a little bit. Probably just had a bad line. But there I could definitely feel the weight of the car. So now, in terms of straight line, I don't remember what the straight line was on the cup car. But I will compare it in the edit. So, editor version of me, please, when I hit my top speed, compare it to the cup car. My steering wheel just fucking oscillated for no reason. Oh shit. Here we go again. Boy ain't no way, boy. Boy ain't no way. What the f Okay, so we're going again. As you saw, we had a very weird snap in the steering on the straight. And I actually do not know whether that was the car or my force feedback doing something weird. We'll get to that bit of straight again uh, and see. Because if it happens on the same bit of track, it can't be the steering, surely. It has to be the car. But first impressions, it turns in really nicely for turn three or turn four, depending on if that little kink is a turn as well. Uh, it's pretty planted. It's obviously easier to brake having the ABS. Oh, it's there. It's, the car, it's not my force feedback. Something about that bit of circuit, this car does not like it. And it feels terrifying. This definitely feels somewhat reminiscent of the cup car because with this extra weight, it is very hesitant to turn in, especially on the flat stuff. And I'm having to trail brake quite aggressively. But through this turn, it's really nice. It, it turns in nicely. Like you can feel the way it tips in to the inside is, is really nice. It's good feedback. Through here, it's not great. It goes really light over that weird little bump there. Feels awful, to be honest. Through most of this stuff, I mean, it's pretty much the same as the cup car, I think. I 
feel like instead of it going light because you've spun the wheels up, it sort of just goes light off throttle, like like, but not like lift off oversteer. Like it just the rear just doesn't want to stay planted. As soon as you're not giving it power, it's just like okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you now. <laughs> I'm going to turn whilst the rest of the car doesn't put you on a wall. I slightly suspect that the uh, the weird issue going on here might be caused... I mean, this is a very bumpy bit of track, so it makes sense. But it might be caused by me going left there and opening up the circuit. So I won't do that now. Down to second, just like the cup car. Really having to drag the brakes. It's obviously so much easier having ABS. But it, it sort of defeats the point, in my opinion. And what I'm finding is, because I have ABS, it sort of just feels like I'm driving a really shitty setup GT3 car, which is exactly what this is. So that makes sense, but also, if it was meant to emulate a completely different car, it just, it doesn't feel like it's a different car at all really it just feels like a 911 gt3 that doesn't like me and then here little bump car hates that lift off the throttle carries in speed i just feel like i'm so slow right now too like it feels it feels less sluggish in terms of the inputs so when i want to brake and rotate the car i can more easily but the overall nature of the car is, it's just wobbly. I'm not really sure how to explain it, but it doesn't feel like something that I'd want to race. I do like that it turns in easier and it's less resistant to turning in. And I definitely agree that having the weight penalty does make it feel a lot more like the cup car than the GT3. But when you're not giving the car much input, like you're not braking much and you're not giving it much throttle, it just feels like a slow, wobbly, sluggish mess in my opinion. Obviously the one problem with using a setup on a car to try to make the car feel like a different car is you then can't have a setup or individual tracks because the purpose of this setup was to make this car feel like a 992 Cup car according to a real driver. It wasn't to make a car that feels like a 992 Cup car that can drive around Barthurst. And when Daniel Mora tested this, I believe he did it at Sebring. So maybe this is better suited to Sebring. But in my opinion, it, I don't know. It just feels odd. I mean, it hooks around nicely there. There you can just, oh, and then we're on the wall. Coming into the dipper, it's it's really weird. So on most turn-ins, the front end feels more planted than the regular cup car, which is nice. But then through a lot of the hilly stuff where, you know, the car goes light, the weight transfer is really odd, and especially into the dipper, the front sort of jumps and then you land back down and you have to really hook it last second. When you do that, it's sort of just, it's like it doesn't want to turn at all. Like the front is so planted everywhere else, then as soon as it becomes lighter and there's like no weight on it, it's like all that extra weight just goes, okay, well, I'm just going to plow you into a wall. I'm, to be honest, I'm not a big fan. I don't doubt Daniel Morad's, uh, understanding of the real 992 cup car and i reckon this probably does feel i guess more realistic to that to him at least because obviously i've never driven one but that doesn't mean it feels good next time round, i will turn off the abs and i'll see if that makes it any more exciting i'm just a bit conflicted with this because one of the things that daniel said in this video which was like literally just released under 24 hours ago from when i'm recording this one of the things he said was that in the real 992 the front is a lot more planted and pointed than you get in iRacing 
and he said that the rear is a lot more squatted and firm. And don't quote me on that. But he said that, like, with the 992 in iRacing, when you get on the power, it's really easy to lose the car. And I do agree with that. And he said that the actual 992 Cup car is not like that. I sort of, I do feel that with this. But then at the same time, this just feels odd. Like, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't feel like a 992 Cup car that has a more planted rear and a more pointed front. It doesn't feel like that at all. And if that's what the objective was with making this setup, then I don't really think, I don't think it, it's really succeeded, you know? So I'll give it a go now with no ABS. So we'll crank that all the way down to zero. And then we'll see how that feels. Maybe it can make the car feel more alive, a bit more lively more exciting i'm hoping so but yeah so far there's just it feels it feels silly it feels it feels sluggish it feels unpredictable like here really nice turn in super easy i like that up here it's all right i mean it's, this bit of track is quite bumpy and it like it just doesn't take it at all it hates it and then my steering's just all over the place through there over those bumps which it, that just doesn't happen not in any other car I've driven just like and it's a it looks like a pretty flat bit of circuit i'm not like it's not like i'm driving over the moon but with this thing it's like it gets the slightest bump in the suspension and the whole body's just like whoa, whoa what am i doing like and there turns in nicely here there eh. i mean I'm definitely able to mash this brake a lot heavier than I could with the cup car. Even without the ABS. And there it is. That weird little snap on the suspension. Like, what the... I'm sorry, but... <laughs> what is that? No car does that. I suspect this setup just... Maybe it only works at Sebring or similar tracks to Sebring. Maybe that's the way it was designed. And maybe I'm a fool for driving it around Bathurst. But Sebring's a very bumpy track. You must remember. It's very bumpy. It's literally, it's an old airstrip or something. This is a somewhat bumpy bit of road here, but we're in a straight line. We've just come out of a bend and you can just about see it. If you look at my steering wheel, this view here should give us a good idea. Look at the steering. I don't think the real 992 Cup with the apparently more planted rear and more pointed front would just wobble side to side like that as we come onto the brakes. And that wasn't like it was a fault of the lack of ABS because we didn't lock up. The car literally, it just left me. I couldn't hold on to it whatsoever. So honestly, I'm quite surprised. I came into this video sort of thinking that this setup for this car, this mod, would be something, you know, something really unique and interesting and would sort of give me a similar feeling to the cup car, but with the more pointed front that we all want and more confidence to put the power down without the rear just kicking out. But it hasn't been that at all. I don't know if it's because of the circuit and the fact that he set the car up and seemed to have just tested it at Sebring. But it seemed that the times when I had the most difficulty of the car were on straights. And Sebring has two very big straights, both of which are incredibly bumpy. So I won't say for sure that this is a bad mod or a bad setup. Um, I do suggest you still try it if you're able to. You, you'd need to own the Cup car and the GT3R if you wanted to compare the two. But I came into this video sort of expecting to drive this thing and be like, oh wow, I wish the cup car felt like this. And I'm sort of ending it now saying that I'm glad the cup car doesn't feel like this. Potentially, I could revisit this whole concept at some point. So let's say Daniel went through every single circuit in iRacing, every single road circuit, and updated this setup to apply to the track while still feeling like the cup car that he says it should feel like, then 100% I'd give it another go. Uh, but right now, having tested it at Bathurst, it is a no-go. Sebring might be another story, but in my opinion, I shouldn't have to go to a specific track for a car to feel like a specific car. That car should feel like that car wherever you take it. 
If you guys do want to give this a go, I'll link Daniel Morad's video in the description. And then in the description of his video, you can find his Discord where you can then download this setup. And if you do give it a go, please drop a comment down below. Let me know where you drove it, what you thought about it, if you changed anything to make it feel better, and what your just overall thoughts are. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please do leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.